Happy birthday. Happy birthday. We hope you're having an awesome day, an awesome birthday party. Right, Reg? Yeah. Anything else, else you want to say to June? Happy ice birthday. <laughs> you want to do a little dance? Yeah. Let's see. Hey, June. Happy birthday, sweet girl. We're so excited to see you get older and smarter. And uh, we hope you have fun today. Wish we could be there. Lots of love to you on your special day. Hope you enjoy. Bye-bye. Wait, is this thing on? Hey, party people. This is a behind-the-scenes view of where Mr. V likes to make most of my paintings in art and sculpture. Um, this is my garage. This is my garage studio. So welcome. Let's figure out what we're going to make today. So we got our stuff ready. We got paint. I think we're ready. Let's get started. Let's go to a paradise on a beach with a little friend. All right, guys, we're a little bit more organized here. Um, I have my brushes out. I have a big flat brush. That's what we're gonna start with. Um, our larger brush will help us fill in the background. And we're gonna work from the back, the background of our project to the foreground where our friend will be. So um, I'm starting with two different colors here. Um, this is a, I think an ultramarine blue and a titanium white. So with your two colors, you're gonna load your, and you're gonna get a good view here because I'm also um, filming this as I paint this. That's how high tech we are. Um, I'm gonna just start with my large brush. I'm gonna load it with ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue? Ultramarine blue. And I'm gonna cover the top, I'd say inch or so, of my canvas. Let's do that now. I like to get the top of my canvas all around the edges, all the way to the edges so that we don't leave any parts of our canvas unpainted. If you know what I mean, it'll look better in the end, okay? Um, and once I get about this much covered, sorry, my shadow's in the way. We gotta talk to our producers here. Need help with lighting. Okay, so we got about that much filled in. And then we're gonna start to add some white to our brush and make a gradient down. Um, you're gonna fade, add more and more white to your paint and kind of fade downward towards the horizon line. Say it with me, horizon. Yes, boys and girls, to the horizon on our vacation to this far away Caribbean paradise. Let's begin adding white to our paint. A little bit of blue, a little bit of white there. Okay, here we go. We're gonna add a little bit more white to our brush and bring it down even further. Now you want your sky to go about three, uh, three fourths of the way up 
your canvas. So if you divided yours into four quarters, um, you're gonna want it to be the top quarter of your canvas, the sky. Okay, and we're gonna try to use big strokes left and right across our canvas and try to kind of fade it up. So you want it to not just be a line of dark with then light underneath, you want it to fade from light down here at the horizon line all the way up to dark blue in the sky. And that's kind of how you would normally see it in the sky. That's called atmospheric perspective. You can kind of see the clouds and all the moisture above the land and it fades up into the sky. Say it with me, atmospheric perspective. Atmospheric perspective, yeah. Okay, it's looking good already. Looking so good. You guys are using worst vest cups. I'm using a whole worst vest pitcher. It's just whatever I can find. I kind of tap my brush on the bottom of my cup to clean the brush. I know it's clean because when I get the water off, the water is clear. All right, and of course, use your little towel, dry off your brush a little bit. Oh, cat came in. Cat's here. Violet will be painting with us today as well. All right, you'll want it nearly pure white right around this line. Um, it's probably really just fine for it to be uh, two thirds of the way up. All right, a lot of artists use that um, ratio as well. So two thirds of the way up, that line should be almost pure white. All right, so try to stick with just your pure white paint. I'm just getting a little titanium white. And then I'm just gonna flip my brush on its side a little bit and run it all the way across right near the horizon. Sometimes there's more clouds there, so um, just kind of bringing it left and right across my canvas. All right, so that's almost pure white. Wow. Wow. Pure white. Okay, cool. All right, now we're gonna wash our brush off again. sound. I do sound effects. I do them. Okay, so now we're going to get some of that. Oh, what's the green color? Lake blue? Uh, lake blue's okay. Lake blue's okay, but we don't want just okay. I guess lake blue's what we got. Yeah, lake blue. Lake Blue's what we got. Yeah, that's the best. All right, so now we're gonna do some Lake Blue. We're gonna pop it up a little bit. Um, I think we do some Lake Blue and mix in some green and maybe just a little touch of white. Let's see where we're at with just a little bit of green. Let's, let's get this, here we go. There's my Lake Blue. And then a little pop of green. Ah. We exploded a little bit. Explosion! Okay, so we're gonna mix those two together and make our own little Caribbean color here. It's kind of like a light blue mixed with a little bit of green. Holy Toledo. It's a little bit too much green. That's okay. We're going with it. Okay, pretty nice Caribbean color here. So um, you're gonna flip your brush sideways. Maybe I have a little too much here. Holy Toledo, I'm making a mess. All right, so I just flattened out my brush a little bit. You see how it's just a little bit more flat? And then I'm gonna hold it like this and run it across right there on the horizon line. You wanna try to make this flat some people like to draw a line with a ruler. I'm not much of a ruler guy, so I'm just gonna eyeball it. Practice run, practice run, and then I'm gonna hit it. Here we go. There you 
you go. All right, pretty good. And then I'm gonna get a little bit more paint on my brush and try it again. Flatten out any spots that I think weren't exactly right. All right, I like that. It's the ocean, so sometimes there's waves and stuff. So I am good with where we're at here. All right, so I'm gonna bring that down about, how many inches is that? Maybe two or three inches? Just kind of use your eyeball it. We'll do a lot of eyeballing today. Okay, about, about there. And then we're going to start adding in a little bit of white. So now we're going to blend from, we did blue to light blue to light blue to white. And then right here on the horizon line, we're doing this aqua green. And then we're going to fade down whiter and whiter and whiter and whiter. Okay, so I need more white. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of white first. I'm gonna blend that in. Just a little bit lighter. And I'll bring it up a little bit and bring it down a little bit. Just kind of blend it together here. You wanna make a smooth transition. Then I'm gonna grab a little bit more white. Oop, bring that down a little bit. Hey yo. We're not perfect here. Sometimes we make mistakes. A little bit more white on my brush. Bring it down a little bit more. Now, if you're like me, my brush was like loaded up with tons of this Caribbean blue color. So I'm gonna take a little shortcut here and I'm gonna wipe off some of this green off my brush. All right, I just have this board here that I wipe paint on. But you probably have like a napkin or something. You can do that and just kind of wipe some of it off. All right, now I just have a little bit less of that greenish color and I can add a little bit more white. Ooh, I just grabbed a bunch. There we go. Bring that across. Should be getting lighter. Ooh, mine just got darker. Cool. I'm gonna make it lighter. Oh, there we go. That's nice. Okay, now we're getting towards the spot where we need to start thinking about the shape of our, uh, the kind of the edge of the water. And um, so what I would do is I would kind of draw that shape in. So maybe we keep it up high here and we bring it down low on the other side. It's never going to be exact, but I'm going to kind of bring it down low like this. And then once again, I'm gonna get lighter still and bring in a little bit lighter in here. Ah, that's nice. Butte, real butte. Oh man. I apologize if I've been covering up parts of this with my finger. I didn't, I wasn't even paying attention to what the screen looked like. But we're looking good. All right. all right, all right, all right. So now you can dunk that brush. And we're going to use just a little bit smaller brush, uh, the next smallest size brush. Um, I have a little round brush. Maybe it's a little half-inch brush. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, uh, I think we're going to be using, looks like a yellow ochre, some sort of kind of like yellowish sandy color. Um, this would work with just about anything that you think looks like sand. Um, but I think this, it's kind of like a dirty yellow color. Very nice. Um, but I think we should lighten it up a little bit because I want this beach to look pristine. So we're going to mix a little bit white with it. We're using a lot of white today. That's good. Um, one thing to think about is when you're painting this in, you're going to want to give a little gap in between your turquoise line and the white line, okay? Just leave, you know, maybe just like a little bitty gap. Um, and your your water line might look different than mine. That's totally fine. Um, doesn't really matter how you make it, but it, it always is kind of uneven and wavy. So um, that's what we're gonna do. 
All right, here we go. I'm gonna mix up the color and then add it on to the beach and I'm gonna fill in this entire white area down here, okay? Let's get it. Go! Mix them up. Ooh -wee. Add this little guy in here. Kind of mixing up a little bit more white. I feel like it needs to be a little lighter. You decide where we're at. I think that's the one. I just held it up here. Yep, that's the one. Okay, let's paint it out. I'm leaving just like a little gap here in between my sand and my water. It's a little dinky brush. What else is it doing it? We'll make it work. Didn't check my brush first. Not so sure the person that used it before me had washed it. Watch out for that. These bristles are just not doing it for me. All right, let's make it work. Okay. Just leaving a little section in between that sand and the water. I think it looks nice. Okay, since we last spoke, I decided to go back to my big flat brush. Um, I think it's gonna help with this little blending portion. Uh, we're gonna kind of connect the sand with the Caribbean water and finish out our background and middle ground and foreground. So, um, I just added a little bit of titanium white here next to my sandy color, and I'm gonna get a little bit of both of them. I rinsed out my brush, so I'm gonna make sure and dry it. And then, yeah, dry it a little bit. And then I'm gonna take some sandy color. Okay, just a little bit of sandy color there, that's nice. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of white. Pop, 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 tap, 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 tap. You hear that? Oh, horse badoo, that's green. Ah! Green! Not green. Come on now. Okay. Let's refocus here. I'm gonna take some of that sandy color and some of that white. Tap, 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 tap. Tap them together. Get a nice tap, tap, tap noise. That's nice. And then I'm just gonna go right over my, do you see this? I don't know if you can see me. We're gonna go for it. You're gonna go right over the line in between the two, right over that white area. So take a deep breath in and let's get it. Yes, all the way over that one. Beautiful, maybe try it again. Going over that line. That's nice, okay. All right, so not so much of a gap in between them. It kind of blends the two together. Um, I might also just take some white on my brush and jazz up the waves a little bit because I feel like there's going to be more sea foamy waves in the foreground. So the part closest to us, closest to the bottom of your painting. Let's get it. Here we go. Okay, so I just have some white on my brush. My white is kind of mixed up with some green. And that's perfect because uh, having a little green in there, a little bit of my sea foamy color wouldn't hurt anything, okay? It's gonna make it so that I can't go wrong here. Um, so I got a little bit of green in my brush and I'm just gonna take my brush along this edge and just add in some 
little portions here. Maybe add in a little bit of wavage. Maybe your waves won't even go straight. Maybe they'll just kind of curve with the, the curve of the water here. Ooh, here we go. Getting brave. Okay. Awesome. Just a little bit here and there. Hey, oh, that's some yellow. Don't want that. I think we're good. All right. All right, so every great artist knows how hard it is just to be like, hey, I'm done. That's as good as I can get it right now. And um, that's all just background stuff. So we'll add more a little bit later. And it's hard for me to just be done. So I might just go in with a little bitty brush, just loading it with a little bit of white. And right on that horizon line, I'm gonna add in a little cloud. Just kind of turn my brush as I do it. Just the idea of clouds. You don't really want the clouds to really take over, but I just twist my brush, twisting some of that white paint out of it. Just the idea that there's maybe some clouds back there in the distance. Helps add space to our painting. I think that is nice, okay. Well done, well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, now we're done. Let's get it. All right, so uh, what's next there, Miss Lindsay? What is the next activity that everyone's going to do? I feel like there's something left to do. And we're back. Back in the art room to finish our flamingo. So um, I have our painting that we worked on earlier. And now we're gonna sketch in the flamingo. This is the fun part. So here's my approach. Um, the body of the flamingo is probably the biggest portion, but then it's gonna have some big long legs that stick down and they might even go right off the page. Um, one of its legs is gonna be kind of turned out and in. Their knees bend uh, different than our knees, so you have to keep that in mind. And then they have this long neck and long beak. So we're gonna try to maximize our space and add all of that in. So I'm gonna create kind of a football shape in the center of mine. Let me give this a try. So down here, I'm gonna make a football shape. Okay, pretty hard to see. And then the tail kind of goes down on the back. So it's like a football, but with a, like a little extra tail that comes down this way. And then our neck is going to swing out and then up to the head. I'll draw two lines to make that neck. I'm doing this with pencil so we can kind of sketch it out. And then our head up here, I'm just kind of draw a little circle there. And then our legs are gonna go down. We'll have some reference photos so that you can use them in your artwork. So one photo goes down, or one photo, one leg goes down, and then one leg is going to go out and then down. I'm gonna draw little knees, a little bit more meat there. It's hard to see mine sketched in, but I'm gonna paint it with some white so you can see its shape. And maybe that will help you and help guide you in the painting of your beautiful flamingo. So I'm starting with a fresh palette getting some white on my brush. And we want this, you don't want it to be perfect. You want this to be kind of a painterly style. So I'm gonna go into my face. I'm gonna kind of go around my eye and bring that down the neck. Okay, nice little turn of the neck. 
And then I'm gonna have the top of the body here. Let's see if I can, hard for me to even see my lines. Okay, and the bottom of my body here. Adding a little bit more paint. There we go. It's nice to kind of cover up these lines that I drew. And a good way to do that is just with some paint. Oops, <laughs> there I am. Sorry guys. It's hard to do both of these at the same time. But I'm painting it out. Adding some paint in there. Moving them back up to the head. Just moving that paint on my project. All right, starting to come to life. And we're just gonna kind of fill that in. So I'm gonna fill it in here. Fill it in down here. Just kind of move to the contours of your flamingo. Just kind of cover up that eyeball. If you have any big globs anywhere, you can kind of use your paint strokes to move it around, get a little bit more paint. You just want to kind of fill that in, just like that. Ooh, just like that. Perfecto. Perfecto. Okay, next I'm going to load up my brush. I didn't even wash my brush. It still has white on it. But I'm using some of that light magenta. And I'm basically... This is all kind of wet still. And it's going to help to go back over yours. And those two colors are going to kind of blend together. Once again, following the contours of your bird. Give it that painterly style. Just kind of fill it in. I notice there's lighter areas and darker areas. That's good. Same with the head. Oh, there's a the head. All the contours. Who's got a good impression of a flamingo? I'm imagining a, a squawky sounding animal. Something that's pretty might, maybe it makes a pretty noise, but I kind of feel like it doesn't. Anyone know any facts about flamingos? I hear they eat food upside down or something like that. They flip their beak around and they eat upside down. I can't remember what it was. All right, sweet. All right, um, now I kind of want to get some of that white off my brush and get some of that light magenta. And I'm going to add some darker areas underneath the neck on the breast of the bird. I'm also going to get some darker areas on the bottom side of the head. Okay. Once again, following those contours. Think of maybe in the tail feather too. I'm gonna make mine kind of spring out a little bit there. This little pop. Just like that. Just like that. <laughs> Once again, sorry about my fingers. <laughs> They're always in the way. Okay, so. Um, and I'm gonna kind of blend in a little bit of white with it. You kind of do this till you feel like it's finished. Could be done exactly how it is right now. I kind of feel like I need to still blend some together. I can still see some water through my flamingo. So I'm going to keep adding magenta until I can't see those things anymore. That's nice. We're adding the, I guess the shades of our pink, the darker areas. We should also add some tints some lighter areas. So the top of your bird where the sun's hitting it is gonna be a little lighter. So let's add that. Okay, so I'm making a mess here. Um, I'm just gonna wash my brush off and get a little bit of white. And on the top of my bird, I'm gonna kind of blend this together. Nice. Maybe the top of its head too. And then kind of blend it in. Perfecto. Maybe just kind of accentuate that there's a, a wing here. And then blend it all. Oh, man. Bad filming. And then blend it all together. Perfect. I think we're ready. Let's add the legs. And the beak. Let's get it. All right, folks, let's finish this bad flamingo out. 
Okay, I added in some legs and notice the little joints on the knee. And you can do these legs any which way, but they usually have one out in front of the other or one up and one down. And then I also added these lines into the beak. This bottom portion here is gonna be black and this top portion is gonna be kind of a pinkish. And the legs are gonna be kind of a, a brown color. I would use that ochre yellow, maybe darken it up with some black. I think that would be a good color for the legs. All right, let's get started, here we go. Okay, so now we're gonna paint in the legs. I decided instead of using that yellow ochre, I think we should use that light pink and mix in a little black to make a shade of pink. Kind of a neutral pink. All right, let's do it. So my brush is already nice and black. It's probably all I need of the black because black is really strong. And then I'm just gonna take some of this pink need very much of it. There. I think that's a good color for our legs. There. I like a little bit more pink than gray. But pink is red and white mixed, and then white and black equals gray, so it's gonna be a grayish tone of these legs of pink. Okay, so we're gonna make it go down using the toe of our brush. And I add in that little, call it like a knuckle, I'm sure there's a name for it. Maybe you could look it up. What's the knee of a flamingo called? Probably not a knuckle, but that's what we'll call it. Let me know what it is when I see you on Monday. Cool, I like that. Oops, not sure what that is. Okay, it's coming to life. There we go. Just fill that in until you feel like it looks like you want it to. I'm just gonna keep going over my line a little bit, add in a little bit of paint. Really thin legs. I bet flamingos break their legs. Probably not a good thing. They probably don't survive after that happens. But I bet it happens. These legs are really skinny. Another thing to look up. Our flamingo is not going to have a broken leg. Our flamingo is going to look sharp. It's a tough flamingo. Rawr. So I'm just using that tip of my brush to go down to the point of the beak. Load that brush up anytime your line starts to look like that. You don't want too much on your brush, so as I, I kind of dab it, give yourself a little dab. Dab it out. And I'm just gonna fill it in. Get a little bit more paint on my brush. Whoops! And we're back. Just fill it in till all the canvas is covered. All the white spots are covered. Something like that. Cool, cool, cool. All right, all right, now let's paint in the, gave this black a little bit of time to dry. Let's paint in the white portion of the beak. Just gonna try to move around that black area. And fill it in. Just using that same white that we've been using. When my brush is really full of paint, I try to work in the inside. And then as it gets lighter and I get like the shape of my brush, how I want it, then I venture out towards the edge or kind of like up against the, the pink area of the bird. And if you go right over that pink area, it's gonna make it look more like a beak, something like that. Oh yeah. Just like that. Just like that. Shout out to Bob Ross. And if you want to make that less transparent, let it dry and then add another coat. Each coat will cover the coat in front of it. And then what about adding like a little highlight down the leg? Maybe one side is a little lighter than the other. Oops, sorry. I think the lights 
The sun's kind of shining on one side. And what do you say we add a little bitty highlight on the beak of our bird? So maybe there's like a little highlight on this side. Maybe you even see where these two meet. It's kind of like this line. I kind of like that. We definitely need to go in and add our eyeball. So I'm gonna wash my brush, get a little black on that brush and just do a little dot. You can use your round brush for this or I'm using my TT Tiny brush. Just a little dot's all you need. And you want that location just right next to the beak. Beaut. Okay. What else? What else should we add? Maybe your legs will have kind of a dark side and a light side. So I'm gonna add a little bit of black into one side. This is the shadow of the legs. The more value we add to these legs, the more they're gonna look like they're round, not just like little sticks. So one side's dark, one side's light. I think we're doing all right. Some people even maybe go into the bottom of their bird, but you don't wanna add an outline on everything, so. I'm gonna try to control myself and not add hardly any more. Imagine there's a little more of a shadow right underneath this bird. Okay. We're looking good, folks. Now it's just like little touch-ups here and there. Okay, so what else is there? Maybe you'll go in and, I don't know, maybe you'll add in a little bit this lighter pink, mixing white with your pink. And maybe you'll add a little bit more into the top of your flamingo. Totally up to you. You could just be done how it is, but you might want to go in and add a little bit more into some of these areas. Now that it's probably dry, it might not blend in as easy, so that's the only danger, but really, can't go wrong. Um, I might go a little bit into the head and add in a little bit more of this pink color, just to make it less translucent, transparent. Watch out for that eyeball. But really, we're getting picky now. Doesn't need to be anything else. Um, I might go in with my teensy tiny brush and add in just like a little, eyeballs are usually wet, so I'll add in just like a little reflection dot into that eyeball. I've seen some people go into the beak and extend, this is just like a little black added to it. And they brought this line up a little bit. Okay. What else do we need? Some people might want to add some things to your beach. You could go in and add like some little specks for sand because it's up towards the foreground where most of the detail is. But it could be fine just like that. Some people want to go in and add, I don't know, I was thinking you could add like some sea foam on your beach. Like go in and add little bitty, little bitty specks in here. Maybe you can make it look kind of like sea foam on your beach. But really, at some point, you just have to be like, you know what? That's just, that's, that's it. Sometimes when we add too much, it almost takes away from our project. We don't want to do that. All right, I'm going to try to use self-control and say that I am done. It's been a pleasure painting with you today. I hope you had some fun. I hope you learned a little bit. And mostly, it's just about having fun. If you got a chance to move some paint around your palette, even though maybe it didn't turn out as like you wanted it to, it's all about the enjoyment of making something and creating something that wasn't there before. Have an awesome birthday, June. So excited for you. And the rest of you, I'll probably see you back at school on Monday. Lots of love from the art room. Peace.